who is in your Premier League 2020-21 team of the season? That's what we're asking Danny Fenn, the bowling poet today. Uh, Danny, how are you? <laughs> oh. Sorry, Marquette, Marquette, <laughs> just, Marquette just, just suddenly invited herself into the recording. <laughs> oh, dear. Sorry about no, that, worry. Jake. That's all right. That's all right. Um, how have you been? Yeah, I'm not too bad, thanks, Jake. I'm a bit tired, as I just told you. I've been golf today. I'm a bit knackered. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, we we have had a few technical difficulties. We couldn't hear people, um, but we're but we're here, um, and we're gonna get straight on in with them. Before but before we do, um, sum up West Ham season for us then. Great season. One of the best seasons. Well, in my times, and I've been there supporting them for 40 years. It's an absolutely brilliant season. We've got to make sure now we move on because in '86 we had a very good season, and then I'm pretty sure the following season we got relegated. So you've mm. got to move on. We can't just sit sit back and relax. Yeah, yeah. I think Europa League football is a massive. Um, it's going to be a massive challenge for us because some teams, you know, if they get into the, if they get into the Europa League for the first time and then, you know, their Premier League form dips because we're going to be playing Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday. But we'll worry about that next season because I'm sure you've got your passport ready and hopefully if we're allowed, we're going on a European tour. Definitely, Jake, definitely. Are you and your dad go to a game or...? Yeah. Well, you asked yeah, him? we would try. <laughs> yeah, we would try. Um, um, if... If we can be there, we'll be there. Um, but without further ado, we'll get into your team. But before we do, I'd like to thank our sponsors for this series, the Blown Bubbles uh, magazine. You can check their link in the description down below. And if you use, let me get out the discount code, as you can see there, Jake Cox at checkout um, on a uh, yearly yearly subscription to their magazine. You can get a fiver off it. So if you use that code on a, I think it's a 11 magazine subscription, you can get a fiver off. So um, everyone's happy then. So... Um, that's done. And we'll get straight on into your team then, uh, Danny. Who have you gone for in goal? Casper Schmeichel, Leicester. He's had a good season. Mm. As yeah. he does virtually yeah. every uh, season. I mean, there's a... Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um... I mean, I mean, there's a, I mean, there's a few uh, keepers that have done well this season, but what's, um, you know, stood out for you uh, with him this season? Just he's all round. He remind, I'm old enough to remember his dad as well, and he's, he, and if he could be half as good as his dad, which he is, he makes him a very good keeper. He's just a solid keeper. He's the sort of keeper I would have liked at our club. Loyal to Leicester, yeah. and he's, he's a proper shot stopper, as he, as his dad mm. was. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic season for him. I mean, Emmy Martinez from Aston Villa's come up a lot, but that's the second time we've had Casper Schmeichel come up, so that's a good shout. That uh, solid as always, right? And so we'll move into your back four then, and we will start out on the right hand side. Who's gone for it right back? Some little bloke who West Ham had. I can't remember his name. No, Vl Vladimir Kupel. He's, he's the only one. The best right back we've had for donkey's years. Yeah, yeah. Um, just yeah. As we say, five million quid. A few people are putting in his team. For me, being the best right back in the league this season, he's just so consistent, isn't he? He's up and down, up and down. He won't shirk a tackle. He puts a good cross in. The only, the only slight thing you can see, he gets very nervous when he's got an opportunity to shoot. You can see he gets yeah. very nervous, and he'd rather put the ball across when he's sort of twelve yards out rather than having a shot himself. But I did mm -hmm. go to the last game, and it was good to see sort of. Give him a sort of a round of applause. The whole team around, the whole squad a round of applause, but especially to see Kuhn foul because yeah, he's yeah. never really been with the fans, is he? Mm, yeah. Just to touch on that, what um, what was it like um, going back to the stadium for the first time in sixteen months? What was the whole experience like? Absolutely brilliant. Had a good drink beforehand. We got in one end and went down the other end. So I went in a Trevor. Oh, let's just say, I went, I went in the ground. I, I moved, I pretended to move about a bit when I was in there and ended up in one end and enjoyed it. It was a lovely atmosphere. It's good to be back, Jake. Mm, yeah. And, and there, was a, lot of, there even... was a lot of noise. There was a lot of noise mm. for 10,000. I was literally, I was literally just about to say that. Even on, even on the telly, um, I said at some points in there, it sounded like there were sixty thousand in there. Um, it sounded like what we'd uh, sound like on a normal match day, uh, when all the fans are back. But yeah, fantastic to see fans back in there. And you were one of the lucky ten thousand uh, to go back in there for the first 
for the first game back and the last game of the season. Uh, but um, yeah. must have been good to give them um, give them a good a good cheer after the season we've had all sat at home. Um, but we'll move into your centre back pairing then. Who is your first of your two centre backs? Johnny Evans, me up my second Leicester player. Maybe I don't know. Maybe yeah. I've got a soft spot for Leicester because I also wanted to have Madison in there as well. But obviously, you said he could only have two per team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Johnny um, Evans. I've liked him since he was at Man United. To be honest with you, he's a good. He's just a proper solid defender. He reads the game well. Again, he's the sort of bloke. Put him alongside Og Bonner, we'd have a great mm-hmm. pairing. Yeah, and just another. Like Sufad as well, another no nonsense defender. Proper, but he's a proper defender, old style defender that just gets stuck in, does his job, don't try to do all the fancy stuff. But he can actually pass the ball as well. You don't play for Man United if you can't pass the ball. And he spent mm. a good few years at Man United. Yeah, yeah. And who have you gone for as your second centre back? Ruben Diaz, mm. Man City. Yeah, I mean, pretty much, I think we've had about 12 teams that have come in. I think every single person has picked this player. Oh, he just stands out. You've only got to say his name. He's just sort of a standout quality player, just top-notch. He's going to sort of mm-hmm. take in with John Stones, who, well, got to be the best centre of central defensive pair in the country, possibly in Europe, to be honest with you. Absolutely solid. Just hope Man City beat Chelsea in the Champions League. Yeah, yeah. And it's almost, you know, all the money they spent, it's almost the last piece of the puzzle now. A piece is now taken out because Sergio Aguero's left, but that's that last piece of that defensive problems that they've had in uh, in 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 the, in the last few years. Yeah, without a doubt. They're solid. Top, front to back, they've got a solid... I could have easily picked their keeper, to be honest with you, mm. as, as yeah. my keeper. But I've got one of their players who I really like, who I couldn't leave out of this team like another mm. player playing up front yeah um, but to finish off your back four then who are you um, who have you picked at left back well, I picked Luke Shaw just purely because again he's very reliable and I did look at his stats he's got some very good stats with assists and what have you so yeah he's, he's just a proper solid left back built like a tank gets up and down puts the ball in and do, does a good job mm. And he's yeah. come back I from a very I, bad injury. Mm, yeah, I think I think some people wrote him off after last season, um, after after the last couple of seasons. I thought, you know, he's not good enough, but he's come back. Um, like like our left back as well, Aaron Creswell's come back this season. I mean, has really proved the doubt was wrong. Oh, I could have had Cresswell in there easily again, but I'd have had to get rid of Kufau on the other West Ham one to put him in, and the two West Ham yeah. players are are fully deserving to be in anyone's team. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Sorry, Jake. That's work ringing me. <laughs> that's all right. Um, right. So that's your back four then. Uh, let's go into your centre midfield then. Who have you gone as your uh, first player in the middle of the park? Suchek. Straight, straight off. He's one of the best players in the Premier League. Easily one of them players we are very lucky to have. It's gone very quiet. Can you still hear me, Jake? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm struggling to hear you. You've gone very quiet. Oh, Jake? Can, can you hear me now? Yeah, it's just very faint. Since that phone call oh, coming, go on, carry on. I think... Oh, all right. Um, that's all right. Uh, yes. Yeah, I mean... Suchek. Thomas and Suchek, yeah. Mm, fantastic. Absolutely oh, he's, fantastic. he's a box to box player. He, he he can cover every inch of the pitch. He can score goals. He can tackle. It seems to me like he loves the club, which is which is a great sort of thing. He loves his potato salad, and he's just he's a perfect fit for our sort of the West Ham mentality. And I like to, I like to hope yeah. that he's going to be there for many years to come. He ain't going to get greedy. Like sometimes players mm. can get sort of led astray by their agents. He doesn't seem that he seems a very grounded man. Sort of he's happy yeah. where he is, hopefully. As long as he sort of mm. doesn't get led astray by his agent, sort of saying, Oh, you could go here and earn more money. 
Yeah. That's just done. Yeah. And another, like, so far, Mr. Consistent, that's for sure. V very. Jake, your, your, your volume must, like, you've turned your volume down or something. Very faint. Oh, well, I don't know. I can, I'll, I'll, I'll move a bit closer. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully they can hear us. Um, but, uh, but we'll move. Um, who's your, who's your third um, central mid, um, your second central midfielder? Sorry, your third and final Leicester player. Well, I'm not even sure what side. I'd have Mason Mount alongside yeah. Suchek, just getting up and down. Probably on the left, I suppose. Yeah. Just an all-round Declan Rice is good mate, isn't he? I feel bad that yeah. I didn't put Declan Rice in the team, but he was out injured for a while, so. Mm. And then I would have had yeah. to get got rid of one of the Czech players. But yeah, Mason Mount, I do think he's a good player. Yeah, definitely, definitely come on and exceeded this season, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. Very, very mm. solid player. Um, he knows where the goal is and he's a proper footballer as well. Yeah, and I feel some of that credit's got to go down to Frank Lampard as well, because you know he gave him the chance, um, you know, in in last season and in the start of this season as well. Uh, but yeah, so your second central midfielder, then you've gone for Yuri Tielemans. Uh, thoughts on him? Yeah, again, he's he's surprisingly young. I'm not sure. Do you know how old he is? Uh, I'll have a look. Yeah, he's yeah, he's yeah, he's been really good this season. Um, let me just have a look here. Uh, Belgian international is 24, so still young. That's what I mean. He seems like he's been around for a very long time. He's been playing in Champions Leagues, I'm sure, sort of years ago. He, he's a very good footballer, proper football brain. Just one of them players I'd love to have him at West Ham. All right, and yeah. just a proper footballer, as I say. And just got a very sort of old head on his shoulders. He reads the game well. And he scored that yeah. cracking goal in the cup final as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, pretty much one less goal was, that goal was uh, world class, that one. Um, but we will move out uh, to the right-hand side then with Bruno Fernandes. He is a class, class actor. He reminds me of Eric Cantona, which is very high praise. I don't know if you've ever watched any clips of Cantona. Have you? Mm. I Cantona used to play. Cantona used to play with his collar up and he'd swagger around the pitch, but he could do it. He could do it. And Fernandez can do that. He can just stroll around the pitch, do what he likes. He looks up. He's sort of ne never in an hurry. Just a lovely, gifted footballer. That it's a pleasure to watch, to be honest mm. with you. Yeah, and he's um he scores a lot of penalties as well. But people say you know he's a he's a he's a penalty merchant. But you've still got to put them away. He scored another one last night, but um they um it wasn't enough uh to get uh Manchester United the uh, Europa League, which uh which brought a smile to my face. I'm gonna be honest. Good, I, I'm with you on that, Jake. I'm glad they didn't win it. I'm glad. I'm glad they did. Some people say, oh well, it's a, an English club. I couldn't care less. I'm not a fan of Man United, to be honest with you. So, mm. yeah, he has scored a lot of penalties, but so has Mark Noble. You've still got to have the nerve to put the ball in the back of the net. Yeah. It's not an oh, easy yeah. thing to do. I've missed a penalty on the Upton Park pitch playing in staff match. I can remember putting the ball on the spot and the goal went from that big to suddenly it just looked tiny and I took the worst ever penalty ever. And that, that was facing oh. the old... Would have been the North Bank. I took that in in the Trevor Brooking stand. I was terrified. There was only about twenty people watching. Can you imagine doing it when you've got like sixty thousand yeah. at Old well, Trafford or sixty thousand at the Olympic Stadium. It would be terrifying. So you, you've got oh, to have no. bottle to take a penalty. Oh yeah, yeah, and you know, people, you get so much stick even if you miss a decent penalty. But you know what we've seen earlier on in the season. I mean, that Lookman penalty, Aguero, a couple of weeks ago. Um, do you get some stick if you um if you mess up a penalty because people go, you yeah. know, go, it's twelve yards. So you're pro you're a professional footballer. You should be putting it in the net nine times out of ten. Yeah, that Lookman. I nearly picked him in my team. Actually, I'm a big fan of his. I really like him. He's a very skillful player mm. and he bounced back. He, he yeah. missed that penalty yeah. against us where he, in the last minute or whatever that was, wasn't it? Earlier on in the season, but he bounced back yeah. from that. He never changes his style. He always goes for the, 
sort of outrageous trickery, and I, I'm a big fan of it. I've very nearly picked him in this team. But the two yeah, I've got, yeah, yeah. the two the two forwards I have got, they're just absolute brilliant. People sort of have a pop at one of them, but he's a great striker, yeah. and we're lucky that he's English. We're lucky that they're both English, actually, both my strikers. Yeah, yeah. Well, people say they have a pop at them because they're over from Spurs. The first one, then Harry Kane. He's he's second to none. People do he does get a lot of stick, but in my opinion, that's just jealousy from other fans. And Tottenham now he's leaving Tottenham anyway, isn't he? So, and I do yeah. wonder is it all is it already arranged that he's going to Man City to re replace Aguero? I do mm -hmm. wonder. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think and so. He'll be the I think perfect. so. I think. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. To be honest. To, to be honest, I think they're the only club that's probably got that amount of funds to, you know, pluck up, probably, I think, because, you know, they put a lot of money into Manchester, Manchester City and Spurs are going to want 100 million quid. And if someone doesn't get there, I can see, you know, it going down the transfer request route and I can see Harry Kane, you know, trying to get out of Tottenham to try and win some trophies, which will which will be quite amusing in a way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you imagine Kevin De Bruyne. There's probably no one better at passing a ball than Kevin De Bruyne. He's going to be hitting 25, 30 goals a season, Harry Kane, with, yeah. with them supplying him. Yeah, well, he, he, he's a brilliant striker. Left foot, right foot, header, tappings, long range shot, absolutely anything. He knows how to score a goal. Um, yeah. And again, we're lucky he's English. I mean, we really are lucky mm. he's English. All in one kind of player, and um, you know, we said earlier on about the kind of the last piece of the puzzle. I feel he's the last piece of the puzzle, and more. Um, you know, Aguero coming out, he's just he's just the all round player that Manchester City could have, and I think it's a no brainer for them. Oh, they're going to be unstoppable next season. Oh, <laughs> they really will oh, be unstoppable now. They're, they're already on another level. How many points did they win the league by? 12? Was it 12 points, 10 points? <laughs> yeah. Was it? Yeah. Uh, I mean... They're, they're on another level to everyone else, Jake. Oh, yeah, they are. And, you know, it's, it's quite scary, isn't it? It's quite scary to, to think that if they have Harry Kane, they're probably our best striker. Um, um, but, so, we'll, we will move on to your final striker then. And now this is a young talent, Phil Foden. Again, his sort of talent we'd love to have. You'd welcome in, him in your team. He looks, like a, he looks like a big gust of wind would blow him over. He's only a little thing, isn't he? But my God, mm. can that boy play football? And his balance is absolutely brilliant. He is he, he's, he's going to move mountains, that boy. is going to be absolutely world, world-class footballer. Just one of them you love to watch. No matter who you support, sort of footballer, if you like football, you cannot enjoy, not enjoy watching that young boy in full flight. He's just unbelievable. Just so entertaining. And yeah, and it's scary to see how how uh, how 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 young he is as well, and how often he's getting in to the City team because you know City Pepper's got that massive massive squad there. He's twenty years old. He's got that massive squad there. Um, I believe it's his birthday tomorrow as well. Yeah, twenty eighth of May. I think that's tomorrow. Uh, um, when recording this, so his birthday tomorrow as well. So happy birthday, Phil. Um, and how old are you but, gonna be? But he's just it's it's twenty one. It'll be tw um it'll be twenty one tomorrow from recording this. Wow, wow! So you've got another fifteen know, years at the top. How how often? Yeah, how often? How often he's getting into that Man City side? No one can get in that side pretty much every single week because he's always, you know, even with the keeper, he put Scott Carson a couple of weeks ago. You can always expect changes with Pep Guardiola, and he's getting in there quite regularly. That's for sure. And I mean, it's scary as well. What? What if he keeps on going at the rate he is? How good he could get? Oh God, another level. And again, it's great that he's English. It all looks really good for the English national team. All these young players you've oh, got yeah. him, Harry Kane as well. Um, I know a lot of people don't like Jack Grealish, but again, Jack Grealish, if he cut out all the diving, he's a brilliant mm -hmm. footballer. 
if he stopped all the yeah. silly stuff that he does, all the dramatics, England could go places this summer. I completely agree with that uh, in terms of Jack Grealish. But so who's going who's going to lead this side? Like, who's your manager of the season? Well, I would go for a certain Scottish bloke who worked a miracle with us, Mr. Moyes. Is it? Is it and David he got Moyes? A fully yeah. deserved. <laughs> he, he got fully deserved choruses at that last game of David Moyes, Claret and Blue Army. Everyone yeah. was singing it, and that's fully deserved. Fully, fully. He's, Worked absolute miracles. But I've seen Alan Irving. Is it Alan Irving step down now? Yeah, unfortunately. And yeah. I'm sure he was with him at Everton as well, wasn't he? Mm. I believe yeah, he's been so. With and, him for years. and Preston as well, yeah. Yeah. So they've obviously got a very strong sort of link and work well together. It's a shame that he's stepping away. Hmm. Yeah, probably a massive part and and the whole backroom staff of our success this season. Yes. People look at it sometimes, and some of the games he probably could have gone for it more. But what he does sometimes is tactics. The Aston Villa away game, just chucking Fredericks on there. Signings, top notch, 10 out of 10 for signings, that's for sure. And it's just what he's done is a, is a miracle. What he's done is instilled a never-say-die attitude, which we haven't had for many years, where yeah. no matter what, they don't give in. The team do not give in. It's just a shame. There was a couple of times the Arsenal game, if that when we was three 0 up, that should have been closed out. And just with that one win, I think we'd have been in the Champions League. If that hadn't ended up no, that would have put us level with Chelsea, but behind level. And mm -hmm. the first game of the season when we lost to Newcastle. Because we yeah. by the end of the season we was in a different league to Newcastle. If we'd have won that, held on to that Arsenal game, we well, we'd be looking at Champions League now. Yeah, well, if we would have if we would have picked up points in both of both of both of the Newcastle games as well, how how they took six points off us in the end, I do not know. Obviously, at the start of the no. season was disappointing, but but that but that towards the end of the season was definitely uh, even more disappointing because you know if we were West Ham fans we were almost like oh yeah we should get past them really easily and it just didn't happen in the end. No, sadly, but you don't. Uh, after the end of the season, the, the league tends not to lie. You are where you are because you deserve to be there. You, you don't win yeah. the league because you're lucky. You don't finish fourth, fifth, sixth because you're lucky. It all sort of tends to balance itself out, to be honest with you. Yeah. So we are I mean, where we are. Mm. And I feel some 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 opposition fans say, "Oh, yeah, it's just lucky." And I said, "You can't be lucky for thirty-eight games. That's impossible. There is no. pure grit. There is pure everything there." And David Moyes has um, has, has brought in a um, a philosophy, and um, it's just definitely worked for the season. That's for sure. Um, but we will we will review your team then. So in go. Oh, Kasper Schmeichel from Leicester, Vladimir Sufal from West Ham United, centre back pairing of Ruben Diaz and Johnny Evans from Manchester City and Leicester, respectively. Uh, on the left hand side of the defence, we've got Luke Shaw. The two centre back and um, um, the two centre midfielders are Yuri, Tiel Yuri Tielemans and Thomas Suchek. Uh, the two wide players, Bruno Fernandes on the right. Mason Mount on the left and the strike force of Harry Kane and Phil Foden, which we could see next season. That would be scary, as we discussed. But um, any last thoughts, Danny? No, just imagine what that lot would be worth, though. That little team I've just created. Oh. I, re I reckon that would give yeah. Pep Guardiola a little run for his money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is a team and a half, that's for sure. I mean, I mean, you could go through that. There's a lot of money there. Luke Shaw, Thomas Sushi, Tielemans, Fernandez, Mount, Foden. Foden's got to be above. He's he's got to be a hundred and more. Um, if they were gonna, um, if they had an offer coming, absolute mad amount of money and quality there. But anyway, no uh, thank one, very much. No one would be able to afford to buy him. No one would be able to afford Foden. Mad. Yeah, I agree. Oh, yeah, I completely agree. Um, but, Danny, thank you very much for coming on. No worries, Jake. You take care of yourself. Shall I call the cat back across to do a bomb us again? <laughs> <Come on. laughs> right, I'll see you soon, Jake. Take care of yourself. Say hello to your dad for me. Yeah, thank you very much, Danny. Thank you. See, see you later, mate. Bye. And there we go. That is Danny's team of the season. Thank you very much for watching. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new around here. Well, we'll be back for loads of videos very, very soon. Come on, you guys. I'll see you very, very soon.
goodbye.